Heim. It's hard not to utter that word over and over and over again if you're a Red Sox fan right now, and understandably so. Heim Bloom is the full name, someone whose story started in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where he was born as he'd go on to help push the then irrelevant Tampa Bay Rays franchise to their first ever playoff appearance, a year in which they'd also go to the World Series and go on to make the postseason several times after while he was a part of their front office. He then went on to join the Boston Red Sox front office as the chief of baseball operations, and that's mainly what this video is going to be about. Heim Bloom isn't just any other guy to work in a Major League Baseball front office. He's a literal genius, and you'll soon understand why. Heim Bloom was born in Philly to a father who was an eye doctor and a mother who was a Hebrew and French teacher. Certainly not someone with the family you look at and automatically think, yeah, he's going to work in baseball but that's exactly what he ended up doing. Heim Bloom graduated from Jack M. Barak Hebrew Academy in 2000, formerly known as Akiba Hebrew Academy, and go on to graduate from Yale University in 2004 with a bachelor's degree in Latin classics. Heim's first introduction into the game of baseball came when he started to write articles for Baseball Prospectus in 1997. Doing this actually ended up earning him internships with the San Diego Padres and eventually Tampa Bay when he was hired by the Devil Rays in early 2005 as an intern getting promoted to full-time minor league operations in October of that same year. Just three years later, the Rays were in October for the first time, going all the way to the World Series and have been an entirely different franchise ever since. The Rays never had money and still don't to this day. I'm all out of money! But the longer Heim Bloom was in the organization and the higher he was promoted over the years, the more playoff appearances this team had. And that's no coincidence. The Tampa Bay Rays are one of if not the most innovative and progressive thinking teams in all of baseball, and a lot of that ties back to Heim. He's huge into analytics and really pushed the idea of using shifts more along with the opener method, starting your games with the relievers. The biggest on-field reason why the Rays have been so successful since 08 is the pitching. They are famous for plucking guys seemingly off the street and turning them into dominant arms. This team does it more than anybody, and it's something that Heim Bloom has an incredible eye for. He knows how to build a team, and other organizations started to realize that, hence the reason why Heim was interviewed by the Philadelphia Phillies and Milwaukee Brewers in 2015, the Minnesota Twins in 2016, and the San Francisco Giants and New York Mets in 2019, all for a lead front office job, with the Mets actually considering Heim as a finalist. As a Red Sox fan, I thank the heavens that none of those teams decided to go with him, because Boston Austin decided to hire Heim as their chief of baseball operations in October of 2019, shortly after they moved on from Dave Dombrowski. And although it's one of the best moves they may have ever made, that certainly was not the general consensus at first among the public. The end of Dave Dombrowski's time in Boston reportedly started to end after the 2018 season, when John Henry and the Red Sox ownership realized the two sides were not on the same page, and after the way 2019 transpired, Dombrowski was canned. In fact, he was let go before the season even ended. Dave Dombrowski is a smart guy. He knows baseball and helped build the statistically greatest and most dominant Red Sox team of all time. But he's not someone who was supposed to stick around. Dombrowski entered Boston in the midst of the team's second straight last place finish back in 2015. There was a sense of urgency with the Red Sox and Deal and Dave was just the guy they needed. Someone who could quickly build a World Series contender and that's exactly what he did. He made a ton of trades, signed some big money names, and it all led to three straight straight division titles and a World Series championship in 2018. But you can only throw money at your problems for so long, and the team that was assembled for 2018 was not going to last. The pitching was awful the next year in 2019, the team just wasn't good, and the farm system was in a much weaker position than it was prior to Dombrowski's tenure. The ownership realized that they needed a new vision for how to handle the future of the Red Sox, which is why they settled on Heim Bloom. Heim Bloom, of course, had a much broader expectation going into his line of work with the Red Sox, but at first, he had one job to do trade Mookie Betts. It wasn't going to be an easy move to make, and it was going to get a ton of backlash, but ownership felt that they had to do it, and Haim agreed. Would they have loved to keep him? Of course. He was just a little over a year removed from an MVP season, and was all around one of the more dynamic and elite players in the game of baseball. Why wouldn't you want him on your team? 
but Heim Bloom understood the assignment. He realized that the Red Sox were not built well for 2020 and beyond, and throwing a ton of money at one guy is not going to help, even if that one guy is one of the best players in baseball. So trade Mookie he did, throwing in David Price and half of his huge contract in the deal for two prospects and Alex Verdugo from the Los Angeles Dodgers. The immediate reaction from the fans? Yeah, it was not pretty. And I'll admit myself, I hated it and hung on to the hope that the Sox would re-sign Mookie after 2020. The pandemic started, the season was postponed until late July, and it would be 60 games with no fans in the stands. The Dodgers, who were already a juggernaut before the addition of Mookie Betts, were as good as expected, going on to actually win the World Series title. Their first in over 30 years. Mookie had a great regular season, made play after play in the postseason, and had some big home runs to help LA win it all. And none of that happened without the lack of fans and media roasting the Red Sox for trading him away, calling out how Dumheim Bloom and the Red Sox must feel for doing so. I actually kind of bought into all that, and just went along with how painful it was to see Mookie dominate in Dodger Blue. It wasn't until Heim Bloom made an appearance on the Section 10 podcast where it really started to make sense. After Jared Carabas, the man behind Section 10 asked Heim Bloom straight up why he traded Mookie, Heim gave a great answer. He noted the fans and people who kept bringing up the Red Sox during the World Series for trading Mookie, the ones who suggested how tough it may be for them to watch him do so well for another team. Did it bother him? Nope not at all. Why? Because he had a plan. He had it before he even took the Red Sox job and he still has it to this day. Heim Bloom said that seeing Mookie dominate in late October didn't hurt at all because he knew that whatever the case was, the Red Sox would be in the same exact position, sitting at home. The only difference would have been Mookie sitting at home too if he wasn't traded. As great as Mookie was and is, the Red Sox just didn't have nearly enough to build around him. Bloom's motto from day one has been sustained success. Not to necessarily throw all your cards on the table, but to win now and also set yourself up to be successful in the future. 2020 sucked. It wasn't fun. The Red Sox were bad. Scratch that. The Red Sox were really bad. If you told me they had an auction where whoever won would get to pitch games for the team by season's end, I would believe you, but it was all part of the plan. The shortened 2020 season ended, and Heim's work truly began. It all started when he made a really gutty choice to bring back Alex Cora to manage the team, the man who was suspended by Major League Baseball for all of 2020 after it was discovered he was a part of the 2017 Astros cheating scandal. That was obviously going to get some backlash, and it certainly did. But but again, Heim did not care. He had a plan and was going to stick with it. Because it's all part of the plan. December 10th, 2020, during the Rule 5 draft, the New York Yankees decided to keep young minor league reliever Garrett Whitlock off of their 40-man roster, not protecting him, making him available for any team. Heim Bloom scooped him up. And just four days after that, Heim Bloom went out and signed Hunter Renfro. It wasn't some sexy blockbuster signing that riled everyone up, but it was a smart one signing a guy who had potential, potential that had been flashed in the past with the Padres and Rays. Skip ahead to February and the Red Sox would sign longtime Dodger Kike Hernandez to a deal and later trade fan favorite Andrew Benintendi to the Kansas City Royals. Christian Arroyo, a former Ray, was signed but designated for assignment by Boston before he even played a game for them. But after not getting selected by another team, spending time at the Red Sox alternate site, and having a really good September in 2020, he'd go on to make the team's 2021 opening day roster. Arroyo has to be the unluckiest guy on this Red Sox team, considering he's had multiple occurrences during the 2021 season that knocked him out for quite some time. He missed some time in May with a left hand contusion, a non-contact injury to his knee knocked him out for a bit in June, a hamstring injury kept him out for more than a month, going on to the virus IL for almost a month when the team had an outbreak, and getting some of the worst of the symptoms on the team. When he has played, however, he's been very productive proving how great of a move it was to keep him around. Kike Hernandez had a solid year, hitting to a 786 OPS, smacking 20 home runs and playing multiple positions on the field, mainly being center field and second base. Hunter Renfro has had an awesome year. He popped over 30 home runs in the regular season, had a 501 slugging percentage, and an OPS over 800. And as for his defense, he's rated one of the best in the league. Remember Garrett Whitlock, that random dude who Heim plucked from the Rule 5 draft after the Yankees didn't want him? Well, he threw the most innings out of the bullpen, pitched to a sub-2 ERA, struck out 81 hitters, had a 9.9 .9 strikeouts per 9 ratio, and was overall one of the most dominant relievers in baseball this year. It was also his rookie season. 
We've talked about the impact signings from Bloom so far, but there are plenty of trades that help shape the 2021 Red Sox as well. Last year, Bloom traded relievers Brandon Workman and Heath Hembry to the Phillies for starter Nick Pavetta and minor league pitcher Connor Siebold. Workman ended up pitching to an ERA near 7 with the Phillies, and as for Hembry, almost 13, with the two giving up a combined 11 home runs in 22 and a third innings. It was ugly. Hembry ended up leaving Philly for Cincinnati where he'd get designated for assignment and picked up by the Mets. Workman signed with the Cubs for 2021, was really bad, got picked up by the Red Sox, and is now a free agent after struggling with them as well. Looking back at the trade, it's not even funny how bad the Phillies were fleeced. Nick Pavetta isn't a dominant starter by any means, and actually struggled mightily at certain points in 2021, but he did eat up some innings and get a little unlucky as far as his ERA went. He won 9 games for the team, had a good strikeouts per 9, and locked up Juan Soto on a nasty curveball to punch the Red Sox ticket into the postseason. Pavetta also has a lot of potential, not necessarily to be an ace, but a solid number 4 or even 3 starter. Connor Siebold had a really solid minor league season in 2021 and is part of the future of the Red Sox. Heim got these guys for nothing. The trade deadline came and went and people were worried and confused that Bloom didn't go all in on this team. They didn't understand why he didn't go out for more pitching and instead got Austin Davis from the Pirates and Hansel Robles from the Twins, two relievers who were having rough years, but it worked. Davis has just been okay with the Red Sox, but after pitching to an ERA near 5 with the Twins, Hansel Robles has thrown 25 innings for the Red Sox, pitching to a 3.60 ERA and a 3.37 fielding independent pitching. And since August 30th, Robles has yet to give up a run, going 13 and two-thirds scoreless innings. He throws hard, strikes guys out, and has become one of the more reliable guys out of the Boston bullpen. Heim also went out and traded for Kyle Schwarber from the Nationals, and I can't imagine this team without him. Since joining the Red Sox, Schwarber is hitting over 290 with a 435 on base percentage, a 522 slugging percentage, and a 957 OPS, hopping 7 home runs while working 33 walks. He's shown flashes of damn Barry Bonds since putting on a Red Sox uniform, and it's been incredible to watch. As for other pitching moves, well, Bloom figured with Chris Sale set to return soon, why go out and trade more pieces for a big name starter when you already have an addition coming soon, and you don't have to give up anything. And going all the way back to the Mookie trade, Alex Verdugo, the biggest name who went to Boston in the deal, has been a tremendous addition to this team. Is he as good as Mookie? No. Will he ever be? Probably not. But that doesn't take away the production and value that this man has brought to the team throughout the entirety of the 2021 season. The general opinion and expectation for the 2021 Boston Red Sox was a 4th place team, a club that would be lucky to reach 500. And I honestly hate to say this because I actually do like Dave Dombrowski, but I don't see Boston in the position they are in with him still around. I am Bloom being hired by the Red Sox was what needed to happen for the franchise, and it's showing. He made a ton of under the radar moves that panned out, and don't get me wrong, he did take some L's. Matt Andres, the man Heim signed for almost 2 million in 2021, pitched to an ER over 6 with the Red Sox in over 37 innings, having to get outright released from the team. Garrett Richards signed with Boston for $10 million, started out poorly, did really well, and then really poorly again after the foreign substance crackdown where Richards even admitted to now having to now reinvent himself on the mound without it. But even that kind of panned out well, with Richards pitching way better out of the bullpen by the end of the year. So no, Heimblum isn't perfect or anywhere near it. There have been moves made that didn't work out, and there will be more to come in the future. But so far, the good has outweighed the bad, and Bloom has turned the Red Sox from a mess of a team into one that made the postseason. And not only that, but they are already so much better built for the future. To put it all into context, when Bloom took over the front office in 2019, the Red Sox had one of the worst farm systems in all of baseball, a bloated payroll with not much money to spend, and a roster that wasn't going to win. Two years later, and the Red Sox have a top 10 farm system, a younger roster, more money to spend, and a team that won over 90 games in a postseason spot. 2021 was supposed to be a rebuilding year for the Red Sox, and it was. They went from a bad farm system to one of the better ones in the league. They are built for the future. But while doing that, they also won now. Whatever happens during the postseason happens, but you can't deny the strong impact that Heimblum has had on this organization. He started off as a young Jewish boy in Philadelphia with a couple parents who had no background in baseball whatsoever, to someone who helped shape the Rays franchise into who they are today, and someone who has basically fixed the Red Sox in the span of two years. This is why Heimblum is one of, if not the smartest man in baseball, today.